Hello team, we have a new way to process volunteers. Uh, our volunteer application has now gone digital. So we will be sending out a link to an online volunteer application. And we have found that it's easier to get the information out to people and it's also a lot faster getting information back. And so we're really excited about this new process. Um, we will send out a link to it. Once you click on that link, uh, the volunteer application will pop up. Uh, this would be what it looks like. Um, and it just basically introduces them to what we're going to be doing. Um, so uh, thanks for volunteering with us. This is the process of doing it. We're going to submit this form, then do an online training, and then we'll arrange a staff interview. During the interview, we'll do a background check. Great. Um, we do ask all of our volunteers to pay uh, $25 for the background check. The point of that is years ago, we would have had a lot of people who say they wanted to volunteer. We could process them and then it wouldn't happen. This basically keeps us from eating, a, spending a lot of money that we never uh, never actually get any benefit from. Uh, but if anybody ever says that money is a problem, we'll take care of it uh, and, and it's not a big deal. Um, if you got any questions, call the office. Uh, we also will continue to have a paper application. Uh, they'll be available here at the office. And so if anybody needs a paper application, we'll be glad to uh, give them the paper application, process it that way. Um, and also uh, with doing the online training, um, some people don't have a computer to do that. Uh, so if they need help doing that, they can come to the office and we have a computer that we basically set up for people who want to do the training. And we will walk them through the training where they, all they need to do is sit, listen to the information, and then answer questions. Uh, so if they have somebody that's not computer savvy, um, we have... Uh, no problem taking care of them to get that work done. Um, our oldest volunteer right now, I believe, is 87, and uh, computers are not a big deal in their life, and so we are more than happy to work with them for that. So basically, they start filling out the volunteer application, their name, who they want to work with. Uh, when somebody fills this out and submits it, um, Mandy gets an email, and then when she gets that email, this will tell Mandy who to contact. Uh, so if somebody volunteers for elementary, it does not matter which site they're going to be at. Mandy knows to contact me. Mandy does not need to keep up with tons of people to contact. She will contact the site director, and the site director will be responsible, or the ministry director will be responsible for contacting the site director to make sure it happens. So Mandy knows to contact one of us for division leaders. Today's date, birth date, what's their address? We send stuff in the mail all the time, invitations. We want to be able to contact them with any questions or uh, training information, whatever that might be. Uh, everybody's going to be plugged into a church. We want to know every person's faith story. We want to be sure that um, people aren't just attending church. and We want to know that everybody has a, a salvation story. We also want to know um, that people have an active faith. We're not inviting kids to come and learn information about a God. We are inviting kids to go on a journey with us where we are discovering God, we are being, we are fulfilling the reason that we are made to love God, to know him, to keep his commandments. We want to know that every believer is in that, in that journey walking with God because that's what we're inviting kids to. We want to know what ministry experiences uh, they've gone through that we can lean into uh, to make volunteering more successful and more impactful. We want to know the people and know where to plug them up and how to maximize what's going on. We want to know what things they're interested in so we can teach them how to use those ideas or use those talents in ministry. Where they're working at, what hours they're working, this will basically tell us where they can and can't plug in at um, or where we need to challenge them to see, hey, will your boss let you off to come volunteer? We want to know their strengths. We want to know their weaknesses. We want to be able to, to work with them um, as they volunteer. So as they fill this out, they'll click next page. Um, It'll move on to the next step of the application, which is basically uh, the My Life Matters Statement of Faith. We want people to be like-minded believers, and this is what we'll be teaching. So you agree with our Statement of Faith. Um, then we'll move on. And we have standards of conduct for the people who work with My Life Matters. We're not inviting anybody into this ministry that we do not uh, know and do not do a background check on. Uh, and people who live crazy. And this is our standard of conduct. We expect these things from the people who walk with us. And there have been times in the past where there are people who aren't abiding by these things and we ask them to stop being a volunteer. It includes things like sexual relationships, um, substance abuse, financial responsibilities, behavioral appropriateness. Um, and so after they agree to those, they'll click on that and they'll hit next. And then this will move on to uh, the criminal record. 
Um, we're basically asking them if they have any kind of background, convicted of anything, no charge or anything, no uh, been disciplined, no. If they answer yes, it does not automatically disqualify them for volunteering with us. Um, and so they have a chance right here to begin to explain what those things are. So after they've typed that up, they come in here and they certify that all of these things are true and they get to sign uh, their name right there. Perfect. Um, we also have a child abuse or neglect prevention policy. Um, we we're going to walk wisely with the kids and we want to take care of them. And so this is some of the ideas behind doing those things. So we read through that. We agree with it. Great. We'll do it. Sign it. Move on. And we'll hit submit. And so they've turned it off. Volunteer application. That's it. What's next? This box pops up right here and it's going to tell them, hey, thanks for filling out the volunteer form. It's confirming you have successfully submitted it. If they call you and say, hey, I'm not sure that it go through. You ask them, did this box pop up that said, great, thanks for filling out the volunteer form. If they've done that, um, you say, great, then follow the next steps. What are those? There's the online. You're going to watch the online training. They put in their email. It's going to send it to that email. They're going to select three people to send the link to, and that link is going to be in their email. If they have somebody they need to do a paper form, they can come by the office and pick up however many paper forms they need. Um, we're going to edit this to add that one of these must be a pastor. It also cannot be a staff member uh, of My Life Matters. And so this is going to be explained in the email too. After the training has been completed, contact a staff, uh, the office to set up an interview with a staff person. And uh, in that interview, our staff person will have a checklist of things to go through to make sure we're asking all the things that need to be asked in that meeting. All right, great. So they fill those things out. What happens next um, is after they hit submits everything, uh, this is the email that comes up uh, in this first spot right here. It basically says, this is how you do our online training. Go to this website. There's a hyperlink there they can click on. Use this code right here uh, to put in there, and it will tell you, what, tell you what you need to do. You're going to choose this online training, and there's going to be two classes that you do, abuse risk management and duty to report. How do we basically walk wisely with kids so that we don't put ourselves in a vulnerable place? All right, next is we have a duty to report. If a kid tells you something is happening in their personal life, um, there's certain things that we are required by law to report to somebody. And this duty to report trains you on how to do that. All right, then we're going to select three references to give to people. One needs to be a pastor. The other two cannot be family or staff. I'll add that staff part in there. Then they basically can highlight this little thing right here, email it to three people. And after they do that, um, They'll fill them out. They can contact the office to set up the interview. This process is streamlining what we do. It's making it faster for us. Uh, and then we can have a little bit easier access to this information as a staff member so that we can read through it before we do our volunteer interview. Uh, so, guys, if you have any questions about this, feel free to give us a call here at the office. We'll be glad to work with you as you go out and recruit volunteers for us. Um, every year with uh, the elementary team, um, we do a, a year-end assessment of, of what we've done, basically saying what things do we need to improve, what things need to get better, what things we need to cut out, what things we need to add. And all the questions that we ask, the number one, the number one overwhelming answer is basically a lot of our problems would be solved if we had more volunteers. We could have more kids in club if we had more volunteers. And so as part of the My Life Matters team, we understand that you recruiting people is going to empower us to be the most effective we can possibly be doing ministry at the schools and at the, at the warehouse. So guys, thank you so much and let us know if you have any questions.